Yep, let's keep going. Language for Mr. Salvatore, yes. Oh good, let's mispronounce more foreign words. How did you like the midterm exam? Y'all did really great. We're halfway there. And now time for another lesson. Est vous prêtes? Are you ready? We. Oui. Tres bon response. Great answer. Merci, my friends. I know I count on you stars. Leading up to the midterm, we learned all sorts of the words from different regions. Starting today, though, I'll be throwing you a curveball. When we begin listening comprehension. Vasi, uh, go for it, my assistant. Pika pee Pikachu. That's a... As you just heard, Pokemon can also use words to communicate. It's not always easy for us to understand them, but their words have meaning, just as ours do. Pokemon can use language to share all kinds of information with each other, like the location of food, or whether they may or whether there may be predators nearby. The same Pokemon cries may sound different depending on what it wants to say. I'm sure you're all curious, so on to we, today that is, let's learn some Pokemon language. Gentempri, if you would be so kind, Pikachu. Ah! What emotion do you suppose Pikachu was trying to convey just now? Happiness, sadness, anger. Say it again, Pikachu. Happiness! Sorry, Rexel, so that's not right. Pokemon language is hard, isn't it, you fucking dumbass? When Pikachu said... Pika. It's using its angry voice. That's right, and a little Pikachu friend here pretend to be angry for us. Don't you think you did a great job? Give Pikachu a round of applause, everybody. I mean, it, it threw its hands up and it looked happy. It didn't look angry. The same Pokemon can even communicate its feelings in many different ways. Their voices change depending on their mood and physical condition. Try listening more carefully to Pokemon. You might gain a deeper understanding of them. Uh, that having been said, Pokemon are quite mysterious creatures. Some actually don't communicate with words at all, but instead use things like electromagnetic or ultrasonic waves. Some even use telepathy. And now, apropos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. If, you're poke if you poke at your Pokemon too many times while washing them during picnics, They'll get mad at you, like Pikachu just demonstrated. Oh, I'm aware of that. Well, adios, mini. A la prochane. See you later, everyone. Right. Anyway. I, I, I would love to see some... I'd love to see a polyglot lead, read these lines. You know? Because I feel like they sound really cool if you actually know how to pronounce the words. Alright, language is five... Alright. My dear friends, how are you today? I hope you're doing marvelously well. It's time for another of Salvatore's language lesson. Este vous prêtes? Are you ready? We. Oui. I would expect no less from my excellent friends. Even your replies to my questions are excellent. Audra Ho Hui, today, yada yada Vasi, go for it, my sister Pika Pikachu. Pikachu! As you may remember from my last class, the same Pokemon cries may sound different depending on what it wants to say. Audra Hui, today, that is, we'll be learning more about language used by Pokemon. Je ten pri, if you would be so kind, Pikachu. Pika! Huh, sounds a little bleak, doesn't it? His voice seems a little lower pitched, too. What emotion do you suppose Pikachu was trying to convey just now? I mean, it sounds the fucking same to me. But he, but he, does hel he is helping us, so. Sadness. Ding, ding, ding! That's right, Raxel! Fantastic! When Pikachu says, Pika, it's expressing sadness. Kind of makes you want to cry, doesn't it? That's right, I had my little Pikachu cry as if it was crying. Haha, <laughs> funny joke, right? Please fucking laugh. 
Don't you think I did a great job? Give Pikachu a round of applause, everybody. And now, apropos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. If you hear one of your Pokemon making sad noises like this one, you should treat them with even more kindness than usual. Well, you probably already knew that, though. A piece of cake for you all, I'm sure. Of course, this goes for your classmates and others as well. Friends should support each other in times of sadness. I truly hope you will all you all can have smiles on your faces all the time, my friends. Our pro chain quar. Next lesson, that is, will be our final lesson together. I hope you're ready for the climactic finale. Adios, matinee. That's actually one of the easier voices for me to do. Although I can already feel my throat closing up. Alright. More classes! Battle studies! Miss Dendra. Miss Dendra of the very tight pants. Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy! <laughs> oh, believe me, I'm not missing this class. Not with the clothing she wears. Another day, another battle study! Oh, soon! Let's get right to it! You all gave everything you had in the midterm exams. Well done! We'll resume our regular classes today, so keep up that energy for the second half of the term! Have you all been using the R button to send out your Pokémon? If you do, your Pokémon will run off into the direction you're facing. It's a super its a super useful tactic. Let's your Pokémon pick up faraway items for you, and that's not all. If there's a wild Pokémon near you, and you send out your Pokémon, they'll start battling each other. We call those battles Auto Battles. Just as the name implies, your Pokémon will act on its own during the Auto Battle meaning you won't have to give it any commands. And if your Pokemon wins, it'll get XP points just like it would for a regular battle, except substantially reduced because we don't want to completely disincentivize you to actually fight things. If you make good use of these battles, you can be a really efficient way to train your party. But you want to remember that Pokemon won't evolve or learn new fighting moves right away if they level up from an auto battle. Also, if a Pokemon loses an auto battle, it'll come back with just a small amount of HP left. Make sure to heal it up right away. Whoops, I just, uh, I just about did the whole class as a one-sided lecture. Does anyone have any questions so far? How do I stop an auto battle? Can I catch a wild Pokemon on auto battle? Uh, how do I stop an auto battle? There's no stopping an auto battle once it starts. You have to wait and see how it plays out. You can call your Pokemon off before the battle starts though if you press the ZR button while your Pokemon is still on its way to the opponent. Even during auto battles, our Pokemon are out there battling for us, they're trainers. Keep an eye on them as much as possible, and if it looks like they're going to lose, be sure to have them retreat. Also, this goes without saying, but Pokemon with low HP are already worn out. Incidentally, anyone here, anyone watching for the first time, please examine, uh, please, if you would, uh, examine the, uh, the base of her, uh, of her pants, and tell me what you see. Because I think the animators fucked up a bit and made those pants just a wee bit too tight. They probably won't enjoy auto battles as much, so don't work them too hard, okay? In conclusion! Auto battles only work if a trainer and their Pokemon have a relationship of mutual trust. Be smart with how you use auto battles so you don't lose your trust of your the trust of your Pokemon. Oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we've run out of time, as usual. Class is over for now. Take care, you little rascals. Ugh. I have to switch out to my, uh, I put my main Pokemon in first because I want that one showing up with me in the, uh, in the lesson. All right. Battle studies. Only a few more. Only five more classes. Five more classes to go. <clears throat> I can't help but wonder why the game expects us to spend all this time in the class. Like, you're, you're making us deliberately not participate in the primary gameplay. Loop. Another day, another round of battle studies. Oh, Sue, so let's get right to it. 
I hope you gave auto battles a shot while we, uh, like we talked about in our last class. Making good use of auto battles will let you train up a bunch of different Pokemon. It's also an efficient way to gather Pokemon materials that you need to make TMs at the TM machines. Speaking of which, have you all been using your TM machine? I sure hope so, because it's pop quiz time! To create TMs, you need Pokemon materials and one other thing. Anyone remember what that is? LP. Looks like you've already a TM machine pro, new kid! The correct answer is League Points, or LP for short. You can give LP and Pokemon materials to the TM machine to create TMs, but that's not all. You can also exchange Pokemon materials at the TM machine to get LP. I recently heard about some shady individuals getting LP illegally using a technique called hacking, or something like that. I don't want any of you to get involved in bad stuff like that, okay? Got it! Anyway, you can also add TMs that you want to them, uh... You can also add TMs that you want to make to your watch list. This will let you keep an eye on materials you need to gather. In conclusion! In order to make TMs, you need Pokemon materials. And if you want to get a hold of lots of materials, you have to do battles of all kind of Pokemon. Oh man, I was just about to shut yada 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 moving right along. I'm spitting all over my monitor. Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, what's next? We got art with Mr. Hansi. Yes, 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 yes. This, this voice I am actually enjoy you. This one is, this one's fun for me. <sighs> Hello class, it is I, Hansel, yet again. I am pleased to say that everybody did very well on the midterm exams. As a reward for all your hard work, we have a special guest visiting us today. Now then, Brassy, come on in. Oh, uh, this guy. What voice did I pick for this guy? Oh, yeah. Greetings. I am Brassius. I am an artist. I focus exclusively on grass-type Pokemon for my work. Brassius here maintains three-dimensional pieces, such as statues and the like. One of his major works is an installation titled Surrendering Sunflora, found in Artisan. Many of you who have challenged the Artisan Gym are no doubt familiar with these sculptures. Yeah, I do recognize some of your faces among your students. Especially that little shit over there. He really kicked my ass and I, am not, I have not forgiven you. I hope you all understand how fortunate you are to be able to attend Haas's classes. Old Haas is the man who saved me when I had lost all hope and given up on myself. But he never gave up on me. I do not exaggerate when I say that he is my mentor in life. It is precisely thanks to Hans, to Haas, that I was able to establish my current art style. Aw, oh, dear Brassie! I'm nothing against reminiscing about old times, but today I hoped you would guide the class in a way only you can. Of course. Let's see. Uh, why don't we discuss what Haas mentioned? Surrendering Sunflora. Can anyone here tell me my mood when I was craft when it I crafted its detached expression? A sad mood. No? No, no, completely and utterly wrong. When I made that sculpture I had surrendered all hope. I was prepared to give up everything. I resolved to give up my life as an artist if that piece did not receive proper recognition. Why? The first time I found out someone liked it, I was literally in the bathtub holding a toaster. You don't understand how close I came to actually killing myself. It is a terrifying thought that haunts my waking nightmares. Hence the name Surrendering Sunflora. Yeah, don't do that. That's exactly it, Haas. When I started out as an artist, I experienced many hardships. I even became deathly ill and fell into a slump that drove me to desperation. 
I began worrying only about what would sell. I was concerned only with fame and fortune. But all of my pieces during this time had no depth. They were all shallow trash. Shockingly, I sold them all for ridiculous amounts to gullible millionaires. They are now busy moneyballing them back and forth between each other. It was then that I met Haas. He helped me realize how petty I was being. I'll spare you the details about the blowjob he gave me, but it was immaculate. But in the end, I was able to leave all of that behind. And that is also when I crafted the Sunflora. Remarkable! Even I did not know the full story until now. This kind of thing is hard to tell someone, especially when they are so close to you. Now... I don't doubt that your adolescence will often find your heads crowned with worries. My advice to you is simple. Be honest with yourself and do whatever your heart desires. Unless that heart's desire like, involves killing yourself, then you probably shouldn't do that. Um, I feel I'm getting off topic. So long as you don't cause trouble, that is. That's it. That is all from me. I must admit, I am beginning to feel a bit embarrassed, so I bid you farewell, Haas. And farewell to your pupils as well. That man has the dick of a stallion. Oh, Brassy, I can't believe it! Such a wonderful class! Thank- <gasps> Thank you so much! Uh, I enjoy taking the piss out of him. Alright. <clears throat> Art class 5. Uh, there's going to be a time when I stop getting to do Mr. Hans Mr. Hassel's voice. But that day is not this day. Hello, class! It is I, Hassel, yet again. First, allow me to apologize for losing my composure during our last class. Oh. I was so touched by Brassius' story that I simply couldn't contain my emotions. I'm sorry for making such a scene. I certainly got a very stern talking to from Miss Time after the class, yes siree. Anyway, let us shift gears and dive into our materials for today's class. Now, have any of you heard of the Ten Sites of Paldea? As the name would imply, there are ten sites in Paldea that are considered particularly beautiful. Among them, I would say the Grand Olive Orchard is likely the most accessible. Really? The Olive Orchard? It's just trees on dirt. You can see field after field of olive trees from the hills on the way to Cortando. Two waterfalls are also con counted among these ten sites, Fury Falls and the Casaroya Falls. Then there's the peak of Glacedo Mountain, also known as Paldea's highest peak. There's another cliff on Glacedo Mountain that's named after its, its rather unique shape. It's the Dick Cliff. Y'all should just know it now. Get the giggling out of your system. So let me ask you students, what is the name of the three-plonged cliff on Glacedo Mountain? No need to grasp at straws. Uh, Glacedo's Grasp, Glacedo's Reach, Glacedo's Run. Grasp, I guess. Exactly! It looks like a hand taking hold of something, doesn't it, Raxel? The three-plung cliff on Glacedo Mountain is in fact known as Glacedo's Grasp. Though its shape is far too stubby to be that of a human hand, I imagine someone thought it looked like a Pokemon hand grabbing something. There's also the mountains in Area 3 of the East Province where you can get a good look at La Vincia. That's particularly gorgeous at night. In fact, the view is so brilliant it's known as the Million Volt Skyline. I hear it's quite a hot spot for dates, and deserves so and deservedly so for having such a romantic view. I imagine it's what do the kids say these days? Ahem, a fleek selfie spot. God, you children are stupid. Of course, you may feel that not all ten sites live up to their grandiose names. 
How often do we visit some tourist spot only to be disappointed? Not to say that you shouldn't visit them, only that you should keep your hopes in check. The important thing is that you go yourself and see them with your own two eyes. I don't know where this accent, this accent's getting away from me. And sometimes a disappointed experience can be a worthwhile in its own way. Take a chance. Well, that's it for class today. Thank you for your attention. All right, one more. Well, one more class, two more classes. Ugh. All right. Would you like to take home ec with Mr. Sagaro? Mr. Sagaro is the voice that, that does the worst to my throat. I tried to give him like a soft voice at first, but he's just, it's, it's, I, I can't not do the gruff voice. Put away your phones, it's time to begin class. Though some of you had to retake the midterm exam multiple times, I am glad to say that the majority of the class passed without issue. I feel honored to see the knowledge and skill indispensable for daily life has taken root in all of you. I trust that you will all work just as hard on your life skills in the second half of our course as well. Let us now turn our attention to the topic of the day, which has inspired by a question I received on the subject of meal powers. <coughs> the student who asked this question is a young man who enjoys the culinary arts. Tell me, is he, uh, he tells me that he regularly researches culinary techniques on his own and pays careful attention to the ingredients he uses. He also spends day and night studying all aspects of the culinary arts. Why, you might ha say he's a master of culinary ingus. Yet despite this, he is baffled by the inability to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers. So tell me, Master Rexel, since you did quite well on your midterm exam, what should our, um, this young man do to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers? Make food more often, should make food with other people. Arvin? <laughs> food with other people? Perfectly correct. I see that you are knowledgeable about your culinary arts. To increase the effectiveness of meal powers, your sandwiches must be filled with many different ingredients. For a single person, this may prove difficult. But, it's, but if you prepare a sandwich with others, you might... You will be able to handle a larger serving of bread. With a larger base to start with, it becomes quite simple to add more ingredients to your sandwich. Which in turn makes it possible to receive meal powers of increased effectiveness. This applies more broadly as well when dealing with a difficult issue working with others to solve the issue may be the best course of action. I am sure that Arvin will likewise work uh, with friends to craft his sandwiches in the future. Oh, shit, I said his name. Fuck. <laughs> um, the identity of the male student is a matter of privacy, so it asks that you do not pry too deeply. Our time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all farewell. God, I swear to God, I would have been, I'd be like two more badges deep if these load times weren't so fucking long. Alright, last home ec class, and then we can, I guess we can spend the last of today's stream just running around talking to people. Ugh. Bum, bum, ba -ba -da 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 <coughs> Put away your phones, it's time to be in class. While you're out performing field work with one of your Pokemon walking alongside you, have you ever noticed changes in its coloration? Now I don't mean that it suddenly becomes a shiny Pokemon or any nonsense like that. I'm speaking of it becoming filthy! Pokemon battle. They get hurt by using moves against them. They get battered by wind and rain. They get covered in sand and mud. They get, in a word, filthy. I've seen many a trainer walking around with their adorable little Pokemon without addressing this issue. It's deplorable! Let me ask this question of someone who I am sure would not tolerate such shameful conduct. Ah yes, Master Rexel. What should you do if your Pokemon is dirty? Dirty. Dirty Pokemon. Clean it up, pat it on the head, nothing. Clean it up. Perfectly correct. I knew I could count on you to provide me with such an answer. When your Pokemon are dirty, clean them, goddammit! 
This is, of course, simple common sense. While you're having a picnic, you can approach your Pokémon on your team and perform a variety of actions. Most of which are not to be spoken of in a classroom. Uh, one is called Pokémon Wash. In other words, you'll be able to clean them up. You start by getting your sponge lathered up with soapy bubbles as you gently and carefully scrub your Pokémon. Once your Pokémon is nice and covered in soapy bubbles. Soapy, slick bubbles. The bubbles will encapsulate the filth where you simply wash it away with a spray of water. I actually did stop and, like, look into why soap works that way. It's actually fascinating why soap is clean. Why soap can be used to clean things off of our bodies. This will get your Pokemon clean and shining bright as a Terra Jewel. It is certainly quite a bit of work, but this will also restore HP and cure status conditions. However, some Pokemon may have parts of their bodies they don't want scrub. <laughs> I'll bet they don't. And that they would rather not get wet. That I can't relate. Be sure to keep that in mind when cleaning your Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, cleaning your Pokemon. Now the most important point that I must mention is that some Pokemon like to be dirty. Though so I will contradict myself by saying this, please do remember that cleaning your Pokemon is not always the kind thing to do. Our time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all farewell. Yeah, Jen, little, little, little suspect in there, not gonna lie. <laughs>